How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use import session data in Pro Tools. I have a session right here, and the song is mixed. Right now it's mix number two. We'll get back to that in a bit. Let's take a look at the session though. A bunch of drum tracks with plugins on them. All the volumes are set with automation. I have groups as well. So the drums are going at the drum bus and showing up here, and then going to the main bus. Same thing with the bass, a few bass tracks going at the bass bus, a few guitar tracks going at the guitar bus. Again, everything is automated with plugins, lead vocal, double vocal, some harmonies, all going at the background vocal bus right here, then a master fader with some plugins, and a bunch of effects returns, some reverbs, and delays. So sometimes we're going to want to import stuff to an already worked on session. Like for instance, in this song, let's say we wanted to import some effect sounds. Rather than bring in the sample and create it again, we could just import it from another song or another session. So let's do that. Let's go down here and select the last track before the master fader because we want to put our effect sounds track right after it. Then we go to the file menu and choose import session data. And then we choose what session we want to import from. In this case, I'm going to bring in some effect sounds. So the session here called effect sounds. Let's choose that. And it opens up this dialog. Now, depending on what version of Pro Tools you're using, it might look a little different. In this situation, I'm using HD in Pro Tools 11. Now, if you're not using HD, you have less features than this, but they still work the same way. Here's where it's coming from. We could choose to offset it. But dealing with audio, we could choose how it's handled or brought in. We could choose to copy it from the original session, which is what I recommend. This way you have a different copy in each project folder. Otherwise, you could choose link to source media. And that's gonna to link to where the original audio is, but then all our files won't be in each project. So it can get confusing and you can accidentally delete it. So I really recommend choosing copy from source media. It takes up more space, but your sessions will be more organized. So let's go down here and choose the tracks we wanna bring in. This session doesn't have that many tracks, just the effect sounds and master. So we'll choose this one. Notice it changes to new track. So it's gonna put the effect sounds on their own new track, all with the settings the way they're set up. There's a few other options here, which I'll show you in a bit. But over here, it's gonna import and replace existing playlists. That's not important just yet because we're not replacing anything. We're adding a new track. Then we can choose what's gonna be imported. Alternative playlists, clips and media, the clip gain, volume, pan, and all this other good stuff. So you could choose just specific things to bring in, like volume automation, just pan automation, and so on. But we're gonna bring in everything, including the clips and media. So the audio files are gonna come in. Now we choose OK, and it imports it right here. And these are our effect sounds, four samples to choose from. And because we copied them, they're now in the project folder for this session. We could also do this with a click track. Let's delete this. Again, we'll select the track where we want to put it. Import session data. And this time we're going to choose a session named click, which already has a click track on it, and the volume and plugins are all adjusted. We'll choose it right here. Again, a new track. And if we wanted to, we could choose to add the tempo map from the original session, the key signature, markers and memory locations, which I'll show you a bit later, and the same thing with window configurations. There's a separate video just for those things, and we can import them right here. But for this, we're gonna keep all that stuff the way it is in this session. So let's turn these off, and again, bring it in on its own playlist. And there it is. And because this track was set to ticks right here, it changed the tempo to match the tempo of this song. In this case, about 144 beats per minute. So it's already in line with this session. Let's delete this. Now, another good use for this feature is when you're mixing multiple songs for the same project or the same album by the same artist. You zoom out. This song's already mixed, but we're about to start a new song. Rather than starting from scratch, we want to bring all these settings into the new song, but not the audio, just all the settings. So this is set up already, name mix number two, we'll save it. And let's go to song B instead of song A. 
Now this song is very similar. The tracks are set up the same way. Drums, bass, guitar, and vocals. But if you notice, there's no buses set up. For the drums, they're all going out to the main out. There's no effects returns. And also, there's no plugins on the tracks. And all the volumes are set to zero. So no mix is set up for the song yet. But rather than starting from scratch, let's bring in some of the settings from song A. And the way to do that, import session data, and we'll choose song A, mix number two. The dialogue opens up again. We don't have to worry about this yet, because we're not going to bring any audio into the session, just the settings. And over here are the original tracks. Now we're not going to click them and go to new track. Instead, we're going to choose this button right down here, match tracks. And if the tracks have the same name, it's going to import the settings from the original mix based on their name. So kick goes to kick, snare goes to snare. And we should double check this in case it changes or gets messed up. But this looks right. And if you notice, some of them don't match up because this session doesn't have the buses right here, the drum bus. But we could still bring them in. Just click them and it'll choose new track. So the buses will be imported on their own track. Do the same thing with the bass bus, the guitar bus, the background vocal bus, and all the effects returns. So it'll match the settings for the similar tracks, and anything else that needs to be added in will be on its own track. Then go down here, and we're not going to replace existing playlists. We want to keep the audio from our new song, Song B, intact. We don't want it to replace that stuff. So go down here to Data and turn off Clips and Media. And that turns off anything to do with bringing in the audio. So it's just going to bring in the volume, pan, mute, and all the assignments, along with the plugins and their settings. And we could choose them in case you don't want to bring in certain things, like the volume or certain plugins. But in this situation, we're just going to bring everything in, except for the audio. Then hit OK. And just like that, everything changed. The volumes changed, the pans changed, and the plugins got added. It added the buses for the drums and even assigned all the drum tracks to that bus. Drum bus, same with that bass. They're going to the bass bus now. And all the tracks have their volumes set to the way they were in song A. And also, down over here, we have our effects returns. So the effects from the first session are now on the next song we're about to mix. So it's a great starting point to work from instead of starting over. Let's close this and go back to song A on our first song. And let's say we accidentally deleted our markers up here. Let's highlight them and delete them. A great way to get them back is to import right here. Import session data, go to song A mix number one, and choose markers. And that's all we're going to choose. No tracks, hit OK, and the markers pop back in. So it's a great way to bringing in just the markers. Or, as we'll see later, tempos, window configurations, and a few other things. Now I'd say we're really happy with this mix. Mix number two, except the lead vocal sounded better in mix number one. Rather than starting over or trying to copy the settings, we can just import that one track from mix number one and add it to mix number two. Right here. Now we're not going to change the audio, because that stuff's the same anyway, but I'm pretty sure the volume is different from mix number one. So let's check it out right here. Here's our volume, and we preferred the sound from mix number one. Let's import just that information. Import, session data, go to mix number one, and we'll choose lead vocal, and we'll match it with our lead vocal. Unselect the markers, and over here, we're not going to worry about the audio, just everything else. Hit OK, and it brought in different information from mix number one. If we undo it, it looked like that, and if we redo it, it's set up like that. So now we combine the best of both mixes, and we can do that with anything. We can bring in the drums from mix number one, the bass from mix number two, and so on. 
So it's a great way of combining different things we like about different mixes. And also a great way of bringing in anything like effects returns or effects sounds from another session. So that's importing session data in Pro Tools. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.